God is always inclined on these occasions to be a little apprehensive. I suppose in a sense that can also apply to you. Mm -hmm. As always, this uncertainty as to what may transpire, if anything. And of course, as you well know, we have many things to contend with, conditions, vibrations, indeed so many factors have to be taken into consideration, have to be faced by us before we can hope to achieve even the merest whisper, to hold a long conversation, to be able to transmit thoughts clearly, distinctly, as sun to you so that you may know what we are endeavouring to put over is in itself a task which involves many people on this side, indeed a whole group. There are those whose task it is to construct as best they can a replica of the vocal organs necessary for speech from the ectoplasm, which is the substance drawn from the medium chiefly. This substance which is a life-giving force by which we are able to communicate with you. There must be many in your world who are curious as to how it is we who are so-called dead can communicate with you in a vocal manner to be able to simulate, if only for a brief moment of your time, our personalities, our speech, to be able to give to you some identity of individual personality and character, and in some instances known to you by relationship or by some link of the past. Of course, there are many souls who come to you whose voices must at times sound unfamiliar Sometimes that is due to the fact that you have no remembrance of the individual's voice and personality. You may not have met the individual concerned, and therefore you cannot say that you recognize the voice. Also, of course, we cannot always reconstruct identically the voice. After all, one must remember that the voice box itself is merely an artificial reconstruction of the vocal organs necessary for speech. And in a sense, it has no particular individuality or characteristic, such as would be common to an ordinary person while on Earth. We all must use the same vehicle for our expression. And since that power that is used is derived chiefly from the medium, it is obvious that we are limited, at times particularly, in being able to reconstruct some resemblance of our earthly voice, which after all is in a sense purely a physical thing according to man's physical structure, according to background and education or lack of it when on earth. So many things, of course, as you well know, apply to a voice. What makes it individual to the individual concerned and characteristic of the personality. To assume, as we have to, 
our old selves for recognition purposes is not an easy matter. We have to enter into the earth vibration. We have to try, as best we may, to remember much about ourselves for evidential purposes, for proof, as you would say, which so many people claim is essential and necessary, which, of course, we agree with to a point. I'm speaking this fashion today because I know that this book, which you have on hand, will arouse a lot of interest among people, and you no doubt will receive letters. People will want to know how it is the so-called dead can communicate, and if it is so, how they are able to reconstruct a voice since they no longer have a physical, vocal organ or a material body in which to vibrate your atmosphere and create sound. I thought perhaps today it might be interesting, helpful, even perhaps as a chapter in your book about the voice. Yes. Very helpful. Very helpful. May we have your name, friend? My name is Lodge. Oh, how lovely. Oh, it's very interesting. Oh, very I do not have to tell you the obvious things no. which are well known to you in regard to my past on Earth. Mm -hmm. But I'm very conscious as I speak to you the myriad thoughts that emanate in your world from people who claim to be psychical researchers or, if not psychical researchers, claim to be interested in this subject I know only too well the attitude of mind of certain of these people. And in some part, I sympathize with them. Although I do realize more and more since my coming here, that when we are dealing as we are dealing with a thing which is so fundamentally of a spiritual nature, how one may hope to satisfy completely all people on your side of life, particularly those who approach it purely on a material and so-called scientific basis, how we can help to prove it 100% to them, I do not think it is really possible. Because whatever we may tell you about the mechanics of communication, whatever we may tell you about the methods that are used by us, to some extent it is limited for various and obvious reasons. Mediums in themselves must be highly sensitized creatures. And when you have a highly sensitized individual, not only is that person sensitive to spiritual vibrations and spiritual thoughts and emanations from us, but obviously is more affected by material conditions, by the thoughts, the vibrations of individuals, particularly individuals who may or may have an interest and sit with him or her, as the case may be. Looking back over my own researches, looking back over the past, I realize even more how little I knew about 
the mechanics of communication, how vitally important it is, particularly in this form of mediumship direct voice, that only those sitters who really have a complete understanding of all the manifold difficulties should be allowed to sit. I do not suggest that because a person is a scientist or approaches it from a scientific point of view, I do not suggest that they should not be allowed to sit with mediums. Obviously, if they are to receive conviction, they must. But they must have an understanding. They must have a realization of the delicate situation which is brought about when one attempts to make contact. There must be complete and absolute harmony. Naturally, a medium has to be cooperative. And I think the average medium is cooperative. But they must also feel that the individuals who come to them are coming with the right attitude of mind, the right motive that they are genuinely seeking truth, that they are not going to put any barriers in the way, that they are going to meet the communicating entities from our side in the right spirit. I do not suggest that modern science as such should not use certain methods to prove this great fact of communication. I think that under certain circumstances, in full cooperation with the medium and the guides of the medium, it would be a very good thing. But I know only too well from my own experience how uncertain it would be. in all their sincerity, and how they can throw the proverbial spanner in the works. This communication is of such a delicate nature. The whole structure is so complicated. And when we remember that the basis of all communication must be and is of a thought nature all manner of things must be taken into consideration it is true that one may have a strong physical mediumship but behind that physical mediumship power of thought. The individual who is trying to bring about some particular manifestation, whether it be a simple thing such as lifting a pencil from a table or moving a table itself or moving a trumpet in a circle or speaking through that trumpet or whether it means bringing into the room through closed and locked doors, some apple from a long distance, behind all these manifestations is the power of thought, the power of the individual's thoughts from this side. And then of course we come to the problem, which is in a sense I admit a very real problem, power of the thoughts of the sitters, of the medium. In the first instance, the medium himself must be able to sit, if the results are going to be worthwhile at all, in complete and absolute harmony with a feeling of trust, that he can trust the people who are sitting to obey the psychic and spiritual rules which must 
be very much adhered to at a seance. The slightest thing, because of the delicacy of the whole proceedings, can be wrecked and affected by the thoughts, untoward thoughts, of one sitter. I have known of cases where a group of people have been in the opinion that a medium was not genuine, and they have sat with that medium for the deliberate intent and purpose of proving that medium to be a fraud, and their very thoughts have created such a situation that that medium who has been in the trance condition has automatically done the very thing people have expected of him. Because after all, if we from this side find the power of thought, using our instruments to bring about certain results, if we use, as we must, that method of thought, the power of transference of our thought to the medium, who automatically becomes the subject, that medium conveys and does under an automaton condition what we desire him to do. Trans mediumship particularly is very subject to this and indeed it could not be if it were not so. Take then the reverse the group of sitters whose one intent and purpose and desire is to prove the instrument at fault fraudulent. They can make him do anything. True mediumship can only come through complete and absolute trust and harmony among the peoples concerned on both sides. Nothing is impossible to the power of the spirit and the manifestation of the spirit when you have this complete and absolute union and after all said and done. There is no reason why it should not be. And my experience, and the experience of many, is that very few so-called researchers are honest. I'm not suggesting that they do not consider themselves honest, but their method, their approach, is dishonest. And because they are researchers, because they are scientists, it has to be. Unfortunately, the average scientist, when he approaches this subject, which is completely outside his own realm, outside the nature of things, as he would say, outside material conditions, he approaches this with no guide, nothing to help him. He, he, he tries desperately to find, as he would say, a material answer to the problem, a scientific answer. And there is no scientific answer, there is no material answer, there cannot be. This is a thing of the spirit, of the mind. And believe me, the reasons why scientists as such, or so-called scientists in some instances, there are many, or at least there are some, shall we say, today, in your world who claim to be scientists, seeking where they can find the opportunity that is through mediums, the answer to this problem, the whole approach is so unscientific. I am mentioning all these things and speaking in the manner in which I am speaking because I know how difficult it is and how you will be from various quarters and sometimes from quarters which possibly you would least expect you will be attacked for your book. Mm -hmm. You must expect it. But what is important is the truth of that which is written. And to those who are intelligent enough to read your book and assimilate it and read it again until such time as they have formed an honest opinion within themselves. They themselves will find 
that joy and that comfort that it can bring eventually. But you will be attacked. You will have people who will say, well, oh yes, it's all very interesting, but how do we know? We were not there. And then they will say, well, of course, how do we know that they were the people they claimed to be? Over the many months and years that you've been sitting, you've had communications from all manner of people. And they've given their own individual messages. They have told you in their own way, in their own fashion, of their own experiences. And I think you will agree that they have achieved a great deal, but they are only too conscious of the fact of much that has been left unsaid, that they would have liked to have conveyed, but words in themselves were inadequate. And not only that, the difficulties of communication being so many. There have been, a t there have been times when they could not succeed sufficiently, particularly on perhaps some particular theme which they had chosen, or some explanation that they particularly would have liked to have given. Of course, any book is bound to have its faults. Your book will have much to recommend it. It has the power and the strength and the love of the spirit behind it. Untold numbers of souls have endeavoured and helped and have contributed towards it. But you will expect and you will receive condemnation and praise, probably in equal more or less proportion. Possibly the biggest attack will come from people who will say, this or that person, how do we know that he or she is the person they claim to be? Strange in a sense, because in my opinion, it is the most unimportant thing of all. I suppose, to those still on earth, names, are the most important, or one of the most important things. A person is impressed by a name in a material world. In a spiritual world, names are the least important. We are impressed, not by a name, but by a character, by a person's integrity, person's spirituality and if a name is yours as it is often yours in communication it is because quite often you have felt possibly that it would have carried some weight that may well be in some quarters but I say to you my friends what is important is the message not the name let those who read the book judge of its validity and its truth by what is said in its pages. A book that is written by the voice of the Spirit in sincerity and in love with the one desire to help humanity, to break down the barriers that man has created in your world, that separates him from God and himself, to bring about truth in all things, that all men may walk freely, unshackled by creeds and dogmas, unshackled from all the foolish ties that bind him and destroy him. We are concerned above all things 
in doing the will of God, inspiring his children in the light of our progress, that they may follow the path that is set, that they may find in consequence that peace that tranquility of mind and of spirit which will bring harmony and love into your world. We feel that only by this communication, breaking down of the barriers between your world and ours, shall we ever hope to bring truly the brotherhood of man on earth. Yours is a task, my friends, that you have done diligently and well. You have been faithful to those who have come to you. You have endeavored to do the work that they have set you. And soon when your book is published, untold numbers of people will know of what you have endeavored for them. For you have not done this for self but that the world might share in that which you have found. Be not discouraged by those who will endeavor to discredit the book from you, but be assured that your faith, your trust, your sincerity and your endeavors will bring its reward. May not be in a material sense, but that is not your desire but its reward will be in a greater sense a spiritual one. For all that you have done, we thank you. And to all those who read this book, we say, read and learn. And having learned, digest, and put into operation in your daily lives, open wide your hearts, to love and realize that this love that flows to you from us makes possible all things have no doubts have no fears for death is the gateway to life eternal be of good heart and know that we shall truly be as one. But in the meantime, do what you can to spread this truth and men may be free. And having found freedom, find that peace which the world of flesh cannot give. May God be with you. May God bless you. Peace be with you all. Farewell, my friends. So, I thank you very, thank very you. much.